Come on. It's like, oh, yeah, so 400 votes. I'm now the commissioner of 100,000. 170,000. Yeah. Small district. Single member district. Is that All right. That's why you never do that. Want to do the roll call? Yeah. Council Member Schroeder? Here. Council Member Jablonski? Here. Council Member Brightcruz? Here. Vice Mayor Fitzkelly? Here. Mayor McKay? Here. We have a quorum. If we could please stand for the pledge. Michael, Mr. Hanley, could you lead us, please? <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Speakers. How many speakers we got? We have six speakers, uh, Mayor. David, uh, number one is David Kaczynski, followed by Mike Hanley, followed by Bob Hartman. Okay. Well, he, he only named the three. He'll catch them up as he goes. <laughs> yeah, Mike's on. on. Switch on the top. Right there where your thumb is. Uh, Test. All right. There you go. Uh, good evening, Council. David Kaczynski, 6411 Holotee Trail. Um, here to speak on behalf of the Sunshine Ranches Homeowners Association. Two weeks ago, I was called out um, on an article that was published in our Wagler. I think everybody kind of remembers this. Um, I was told that the content was wrong. The phone was ringing off the hook thinking there must have been some kind of error in editing because I'm very careful with my writing. I write for a living. Uh, I ran out and proofread it. And I looked at the article and there's a clarification at the beginning. It says, below is a reprint from the town of Southwest Ranches, Southwest Rancher. Uh, the paragraph in question reads, for properties such as those located along Sterling Road where a guardrail is in place, Comma, there is no place for residents to place their bulk. These residents may locate their generated bulk across the street from them. And when I wrote that, I went to your own magazine. This is the publication you guys send out. And there's an article on page 7 in the uh, September 27th publication. The article is Code Enforcement in You written by Robert Solera, uh, the code enforcement officer. When I was questioned on this, I went right to Robert. I asked Robert, did you write this? And he said, yes. In that, the question in the article says, for properties such as those located along Sterling Road, comma, where a guardrail is in place, there is no place for residents to place their bulk. These residents may locate their generated bulk across the street from them. It's verbatim, word for word. I was told this was wrong. I asked Andy about this, and Andy said he'll get to the bottom of it. He said it was poorly written. Um, so what was written in the Wagler was a verbatim publication of what came from your own magazine. So it was 100% accurate based upon what Robert wrote. And if my article was wrong, then certainly Robert's writing must be wrong. So um, I think the uh, calling out that this was wrong, that was wrong. Bob Hartman, 5441 Southwest 198th Earth. Told you a long time ago, don't yell at you guys. In any case, uh, last night, Pembroke Pines had an agenda item that I talked to a few of you guys about last night. Um, that they had an agenda item to vote on an RFP, granting an RFP uh, to a particular engineering company for a project that is not well defined as you should do in an RFP. And I, I kind of believe there's motives behind that. The RFP was for what they're calling a water loop for Pembroke Pines water and sewer that will go, hold on, water, that will go out to 27 on Sheridan, 
come up Sheridan on the east side according to the specifics in the document. They didn't specify which side of Griffin Road, but they're going to come tie in somewhere on Griffin Road. And in my mind, that's probably in front of Masters Academy because I remember when they built Masters, they ran the water right up to, uh, to, to Griffin Road. Now, Franklin. the justification for this is to improve water quality. So what does that say about the water they're giving their customers now? I'm not even going to go there. I don't think it's for water quality. And I talked to Andy today, and I don't believe they've contacted us on this at all, even though they're going to come down Griffin Road. Now, in knowing what Pines attempted to do to us in the last legislative session during the Broward legislative delegation meetings, I believe that's their motive for this pipe. Bergeron doesn't need it. He's almost built out. If you drive around back there, he's finished in the area that's right behind me, say, call it the uh, north side of Sterling Road. He's finished, though. There's no place else for him to build. Over on uh, where he's building that new distribution center, he's still got some land there, but not that's going to warrant running water all the way up to Griffin Road. So my thinking is they're thinking ahead on all this land they're trying to grab from us off of between Sterling and Griffin out west, and they're planning for it. Now, I don't know if we have any opportunities to stop this pipe from going in, or at least from coming down Griffin Road. If they need to tie in for a loop, tie in at the end of Sterling Road. I remember when they put that pipe in. That, that pipe goes to Sterling in 27. If they want to improve water quality, go in through their own land in their part of their town and not through Southwest Ranches. They're playing dirty with us yet again. And I don't know how, I don't know if we can stop them due to their right of way access and, and the rights of um, gaining right to, gaining access to right of ways, but rights of way. But uh, there's something going on here that I don't trust. And they're not being nice. And from what I understand, they're not talking. So not sure how we can block this, but I would really encourage the council and the staff and, and administration to, to do what they can to stop this. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Hanley, Mayor, before Mr. Hanley speaks, just want to let you know staff did some additional research on that today, and Russell can address it during the administrator's comments if that's okay with the council. Sure. Go ahead, Mr. Hanley. Mike Hanley, uh, 50th place in uh, 205 Avenue. Um, I'm concerned about Griffin Road. There's talk of expanding it. I see that uh, some idiot that uh, marks the road signs out there um, where the dam is. Griffin Road at 199 expands into four lanes. The northernmost lane running east to west is on uh, the northernmost lane of that is... Uh, straight road all the way from 80, 184 out and, and probably east of that. However, the sign says merge left. The left lane is uh, an extension that goes south and then comes back to the north. Why wouldn't it be merge right or merge to the north or merge what? It, it doesn't make any sense. And uh, for me to be going straight on the northernmost lane towards the west, and then have to turn, go merge to the south lane to come back to the north lane is idiotic. That sign should be taken down and changed from merge left to merge right. Uh, secondly, I'd like to request that the northernmost, I mean the westernmost lane of Griffin, of Western, when it goes from north to south and merge, Western Road comes into Griffin, that that westernmost lane should not be straight through to Dykes Road, which forces it to merge into one lane as soon as it crosses Griffin. I live out west. The only way I can get home is on Griffin Road. And, and why should I have to sit at that stoplight every time I come to western and, western and Griffin and sit there and wait for some idiot that's only going to Dykes Road, going south one car maybe out of 20 at 5 o'clock? They have three lanes turning left. If you come down Griffin Road to the, to the east, at any, particularly when the schools are getting out, you may spend a long time trying to get all the way across 75. 
You get stopped at Bonaventure. You get stopped at Griffin and uh, Weston Road. You get stopped going up trying to get over 75. And you get stopped at uh, Volunteer. It's idiotic. But Weston can come and make four lanes turning left or one going south. And uh, they get through gangbusters every, lay, every, every light. We don't. And especially when the school's out, you may get stopped all the way back to 199th and have to wait for Griffin and uh, Weston lights to change over and over and over again before you get through. I'd like to see more efficient traffic for the people that live in the western part of Southwest Ranches. It's bothersome. Thank you. Mike, uh, next speaker, Mario. And Mario's with uh, Robert at the moment. You want to okay. skip to the next? We'll come back to him. Tommy Pinder, Kay Chaples, and then last speaker is Mario. Mario's with uh, Robert Solera would, talking would, about. Would you like Kay Chaples to go first? Yeah, let Kay go first. Okay. Mario's the lead for them. Now your number's wrong. Um, Which, my name's Gay Chaples, and I live out on Dykes Road in a hundred uh, in Sterling. Um, and the reason I said that is because I'm concerned about what's right next door to Town Hall. And I came in and talked to Robert, and he said, "What that is is a nursery." Here's my problem: it's on one acre. It was a residential home. All of our nurseries almost all of our nurseries in our town is on vacant land and uh, they're throughout the town. Is this now something that we're going to be dealing with? Because he is next to a resident, he's across from a resident, that street is a dead end and it's a residential street. Now he's opening up a full-blown nursery with the house. I'm assuming that house is going to be the retail store. And there's going to be a lot of traffic on there right at the right at the bottleneck, right there, and they're going to have to go into that street to get to that nursery. Now what's next? All along Dykes Road? Going to buy those houses? I mean, we have some houses with nurseries in the back along Dykes, but they're low key. Most of them are wholesalers, and they didn't fill in their property four feet with hard pan fill. This thing over here, and, and I guess the way they got approved was they put a berm. Well, we all know what happens to the berm. It gets approved, and then it, gets, it disappears. And there's at least a two and a half foot drop to his next door neighbor. And he's hard fill. There's not going to be any water going through anything. That water is going to run off onto his neighbors. And if he has a swale with a berm, it's going to trap in there. But I, I am totally against what happened there. I have no problem with nurseries. I support nurseries. But I don't support going into a residential area, buying a house for 400000 and creating a business and dumping a lot of traffic on a one a dead end road it would be no different than going into anywhere in sunshine ranches or uh, let's go down uh, green meadows those are all one acre homes in green meadows and they could pick any house buy it four hundred thousand there in business fill it up with hard fill and put in a berm and just so you know, I have an experience. Guy bought the one acre house next to me, came in with hard fill, didn't get a permit. Go ahead. Put it in, and he drops off at my property line two and a half feet. Now, Robert has addressed it, Code's addressed it, and um, the, the outcome is now what do we do? And he's put a trailer on the other side, and it's filled in. So my point is this. They can have a nursery, but they have to blend with the neighborhood. And that's not blending with the neighborhood. Take a look at it when you drive out. 
if it didn't hit you in the face, then you must be tired and you're not looking. And people are going to be driving in there. You're worried about Griffin Road? All right. We've got to wrap it up. Okay. You're worried about the traffic that's going into the ones on Griffin Road, the nurseries, Ricky Spears, and the others? Trust me, this one's going to be a nightmare. Uh, last two speakers, I don't know which one you guys want to go in. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I resign at 4521 Southwest 133rd Ave, Mario Tapanis. I speak on behalf of my neighbors. Um, this nursery that's being put up there, I was just made aware of some code changes August 2017. My map on your website is 2016. The star that we were talking about, they've taken it out. I don't know how it got voted. It surely wasn't voted by us. So my question is, we have a commercial business and a residential area. You all live in Southwest Ranches. We all moved here for what? Peace, quietness. How would you like to have that in front of your house? Or when you turn in, you have equipment. Right now, they're still working. It's almost what, 7.30? You hear a bulldozer going, you hear trees being chopped. It's not a very good eyesore for anybody in this neighborhood. Obviously, we can't change what you guys agree to let happen, but I am asking you guys if we can somehow come to an agreement where our neighborhood still remains as a residential area, where it still feels good to drive down your street and you know, you're paying these taxes, which you're not gonna get from him because now you're not going to get the full value tax from that property. That property sold for 590000 so you won't be getting that tax value. So is there anything that you guys could suggest or we can, I'm going to plan a meeting with Robert next week and our neighbors, see if we can implement. I brought to your attention if he could use the easement on your entrance there instead of 133rd. That truck has to go down to the end of the street, make a U-turn, come back. Our roads are going to be destroyed. You see what's on Griffin, all the sod, all the junk, sand. That's what I spent $500,000 for. It's sad. None of you guys are going to see it because none of you guys live here. So I want you to think about what we can do to better all these people that are the people that voted for you guys to be here. Because those are the same people that are going to vote again when you guys run. So maybe you guys might want to think about redoing something with that. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Final speaker, Mayor. Okay. Tommy Pender, 4511 Southwest 133rd Ave. I shared a fence with you right here. Thank you for fixing it, incidentally, after eight months. I got a couple pictures. I just want to sit down and pass them through. I'd like to know, you know, this was there an environmental site plan or must have been somewhat of one because he did put a, a silk screen up on part of it. But as you see on the pictures there, if he'd have put it up on my side, all that stuff wouldn't have went through my fence and, you know, I might stand to lose like 50 cocoa plums now because of it. I worked for South Broward Drainage District for 10 years back in the 90s. I was an inspector. and. Only one time, and I've called, spoke with a chief engineer, I spoke with zoning, and I never got a straight answer at all. I'm now a code officer for City of Hollywood. I've been there for 15 years. So I kind of know how things work and how things go. And like when I was with South Broward, we, whenever we did a fill plan, there was like a fill spec, there was cross sections, there was details on how a berm goes. And I told this guy last week, the berm that he had like a little test area for, that... Uh, was that? Yeah. That, that wasn't going to work, you know, from what I remember. So finally, I guess the guy came out the next day. He painted it out. It looks like it, we might get what we're supposed to have. But, um, you know, the, the thing with our, our house is like, our, our, I feel like our price of our house just dropped 100 grand over this, is what I feel like for right now. If we tried to sell it tomorrow, we'd probably lose money on it because no one you know, wants to look at what's there. He's cut every single tree down that's there. 
with Hollywood, if you cut a tree down, hardwood tree, you got to replace it with at least three palms or another type of hardwood. There's one tree left on that whole property. I don't know how you could allow that. What's the agreement on that? What does he have to put back there? 100 date palms and containers? How's that going to work? So again, like what Mario was saying, we need to meet with you, find out what we can do with this, and go forward. Thank you. That's it. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> well, the only thing I'm going to say to that is, Mario, stay uh, in touch with Robert or Andy or whatever. We'll continue to keep an eye on it. Uh, as we have issues, whether it's traffic or nuisance or noise or whatever, don't, fear, don't hesitate to file a complaint because code enforcement uh, can work in other ways. So. No, I saw it parked in the middle of the street. So, okay. Anyhow, can't have a dialogue like this back and forth. No problem. Um, all right, so uh, board member comments. Seeing no board member comments, uh, council member comments. D, you want to go first? Yeah, I'll go first. I just want to wish everybody, uh, because we won't be having a meeting then, I'll uh, wish everybody a happy Easter, a safe Easter, and Passover also. Um, and the other thing I wanted to bring up to, uh, to council was I would like to make a recommendation that uh, Robert Sirota, uh would like to sit on the Rural Arts Board. So if you don't disagree with that, as an at-large appointee. As an at Okay. If that's I don't have an issue. I don't know where the number's at, but uh, how about the rest of you? No, that's, that's good. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's good? We're all good. We're good, Robert. Is there a spot open? Yeah, I don't. Uh, it's an at-large. Well, it's an at-large. At so what's the count on there? It'd be a Mayor, Mayor, that would that would put the count at six. Yep. Yeah. But I know they're they're looking to continue to expand that board. They're looking okay. for a little bit more input. So I don't think that that'll be an issue going forward. And you've, okay. had, you've had six on that board previously. Okay. I think it was seven before, but it got lowered to five. I, think I don't know it got lowered, but it just we didn't have enough people. Here, here's point. the question. How many are currently on the board? Five. Okay. Five. How many does the resolution say can be on that board? I don't know. Okay, if that resolution says seven, we have no issue. Okay. If the resolution says five, next we week we'll bring back, back the resolution to make it six. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm okay. proposing that it be expanded as necessary. No, no, exactly. Well, you what know. Keith's point is if the resolution oh, says oh, something oh, different, oh, yeah. we need to bring a resolution forward to fix okay. it. That's all. That's just some paper. Okay. okay, so we just need to all check right. that out and then bring it back. All right. Correct? So we're going to find out. Either way, we'll get it done. We'll okay. know in two minutes. I'll tell you the answer. Okay. Okay. Two minutes. You got to Go wait, Robert. You're still, up. You're still up. Oh, that's that's all I had. That's all you have. Yeah, that's Steve, all. You want to go next? Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just want to address uh, the speakers and the uh, uh, issue that you all have brought forth. Um, you know, I wish I was sitting here and I had a a good answer for you, a way to stop it, a way to make it go away. I don't have that to offer you. Um, but uh, the, the issue that you're encountering is not an issue isolated to yourself. I can speak from my own experience that uh, my neighbor um, uh, years ago brought in an incredible amount of fill. Uh, the back quarter of my property, as these folks well know because I bring it up all the time, uh, rainy season is almost constantly underwater the whole time. So I, I, I feel your pain. I understand what you're saying. Um, and uh, you know, it's, un, it's unfortunate to me that while this town was built on an agricultural um, base, I mean, let's face it, that's what it, uh, much of it was um, years and years ago, that that agricultural base is being used and I believe abused um, for commercial businesses at this point. And um, <laughs> it's, it's a struggle for us, not that we don't want to solve the problem. I guarantee you everybody up here wants to solve your problem. 
the struggle here is being able to um, come up with a fair way of protecting the agricultural interests that are legitimate in town from the commercial instrument in, uh, you know companies that come in and um, use those rules to abuse it and to take advantage of it and um, and so that's something we need, we need to still work on and uh, my sincere uh, it doesn't do you any good and I understand that but my sin sincere uh, you know sympathies and and frustration go with you because um, I've experienced it as well and it's something that we as a town are, 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 are struggling and working to fix so um, I did want to uh, make a couple other comments um, just to this is the time we get to talk so I just wanted to bring the the council up to speed on a, a couple of things that uh, have been going on um, one is we uh, um, brought to my attention I think some of you may have been included on the initial email um, and uh, home on uh, volunteer uh, Kenny Williamson and uh, his wife um, and they, uh, they they have struggled with some development next to them which has I believe taken advantage of our code and our um, building and zoning uh, rules and basically basically I'm, uh, I'm not going to name names or anything for the because because I have not spoken to them yet to hear their side so but from what I have heard um, uh, it sounds like a situation where the idea is we build without permits and what we get caught on we pay the double permit fee but it's still you know it's still is cheaper to do it that way than to actually wait for the permits, get all the permits, have all the inspections, because you know what, we don't get caught on everything. So what I um, would like to see directed to the- This, let me jump in just a quick second. This reminds me so much of the fill issue where we require them with, they're bringing in to have it removed. Right, it's, right, and, and, I want, and I want to do something, um, uh, one of the things that I would, I would like for the drainage committee to look at is that if there is if somebody so basically today somebody starts work on a project and without a permit and it's discovered and reported they pay a double permit fee for that okay I think that's reasonable um, what, what I would what I would because anybody can make a mistake Anybody can try once to kind of skirt the rules. I get that. So you pay a penalty for it and you move on. Um, however, if somebody is making a practice of this and has made a business decision that it's cheaper and then to do this than it is to try it, where they're working on a project and time after time after time after time they go without permits, and they get caught on certain of them and not on others, they're, they're abusing the system. So what I would like for the um, committee to look at and to review is that whole double permit thing. We, we checked uh, with code and you can do a maximum of four times the permit fee. So I, I, you know, for, for a single use, I, I have no problem with the way it is. I think that's, I think that's, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, swat a hammer with a, a sledgehammer. But for a situation where it happens a third time, I think we may want to do triple. <laughs> you know, a fourth time, maybe triple. Time after that, quadruple and, and stick at that. So, that so that there's a little bit more penalty to it. But I, I'm not proposing that tonight. I, I want to send it to the drainage committee and have them take a look at it, have them consider it. A lot of times they come up with a better idea than what I've got. And so, uh, so I want to send that to them. But I wanted you all to be aware that this. I'm was, good with that. That uh, this was in the works. And if you had any feedback on that tonight for the drainage committee, um, I would welcome that. Yeah, if I if I could jump in, Steve. Th thanks for bringing this up. Um, we're, you're talking about just fill and clearing. No, no, no. I'm talking about building plumbings, 
plumbing permits, electrical permits. Uh, okay, that, but that's beyond. The, that's why I'm a little hazy. That's beyond the purview of the drainage committee, correct? It is. I, I don't know where else to send it. I want. I okay. Wanna, no, I'm just. I wanna, I'm, yes, I'm just you trying are to see which direction it you're going. Normally, would be beyond their their I, purview. I think. I think you're not putting enough teeth into it. On a repeat offender, I think if they know they have to remove everything that they've done and bring it back to zero, um, that will send a very clear message. Because even four times might be the cost of business. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, 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 I welcome that comment yeah. because, because that, 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 that mirrors my sentiment. I just don't want to go crazy out of the bat. But, but I, I, I don't I, think going crazy. If it's somebody who repeatedly does this and what that criteria would be, that's a matter of discussion. Right. And we throw it to the, the drainage committee for that. But I think if uh, a plumber or a contractor, right, let's just say a contractor, puts in a whole system and this is like their fourth offense, fifth offense, whatever it is. And if they know they have to remove it, I don't think they're going to do it again. Right. You know, right. I, I well, honestly let, think let me let me let me jump their, in here. Just, nickel. Let me jump in here just a second. And Robert, correct me if I'm wrong here. Um, who's ever property it's on and the property owner is the one that's going to get in trouble here, not the contractor doing the work. Correct. That's correct. Okay, so which which is which I believe is is the right. Well, it's the only hammer we have, right? <laughs> but I so, think it's I think it's the right. I think I don't have right. a problem. Yeah, with it. Yeah. I, listen, it's, well, it's usually the owner, the property owner, that's making these decisions. Is there is there a way? And I realize there's ways to get around this, but mm -hmm. is there a way to ban a contractor? I'm asking a question. Yeah, I'm I don't not, know. It's, I'm not it's pointing a, it's anybody. It's a good question uh, that uh, maybe the uh, um, can be brought you know, up. I mean, in that that there's obviously ways to get around it through shell corporations right. and things right. of that nature. Right. But if you've got somebody that's just repeatedly, repeatedly, you know, opening opening up a new corporation every other week, you know, I I, I think do, I'm, do I'm, not, do, I'm not talking about this specific. Um, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No. Do you do it combined? Like, say this contractor has done several jobs throughout the town and he's got a bad reputation for doing it first of all you can't ban anybody i mean people are allowed to hire whoever they want you know whether whether we like them or not we we don't have that you know nowhere in our charter that i know of right so well i don't know i'm, I, I'm thinking state law i law, think you know. i think making somebody you know after and you're not going to let them go four and five times i mean you know what's the point in that some people have money to burn they don't really care but if you make somebody take something out anytime you have to redo anything costs more than when you do it right so i i don't yeah. I, like i said but, but I, you can't ban a contractor I, I i think what i would say is ask keith or robert the biggest penalty we can do well, so I did ask Robert okay. the biggest penalty. That, that's four times the permit fee. That's the biggest penalty. Yeah. But but I'm, I'm so I'm, I'm not really looking to dis, uh, you know debate it here. Uh, I wanted to make sure we were all on board before yeah, I yeah, sent, I before I sent it I'm there. On, we're on board, and it sounds like we are. We are. Um, and uh, but I but I don't. I, I think I'm with D or whatever. I don't. I, I don't want to waste second or third time. They get them a second time and well, slam here's, them. Well, here's 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 <laughs> the thing. You know, I I think we I I want to be cautious that we don't go from too far this way to too far that way. You know what I mean? I, I, there, there, are, there are situations, uh, we, we talked about one, um, you know, somebody comes in and um, they, they try and get away with something, right? And they, so they, they, don't get, they don't pick up a couple of permits, like they should, and it's discovered. And so they come in and then they, you know, they get those two or three permits that they should have gotten up front and they didn't. Well, to me, okay, there was somebody that, did the wrong thing. They should pay double permits two or three times, and and now hopefully they've learned their lesson. But it's 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 them if they then come back again later, like now we know they know, and now they're just trying to get away with it. That, that's the situation that I'm most concerned about. Um, you know, I, I don't I don't I'm not I'm not here to be the policeman. You know, I I want I want to make sure like anything else, that we, those that are attempting to use and abuse the good nature of this town are penalized. Those people that are, uh, you know, weekend warriors trying to put up something real quick, and, uh, you know, I, I, want them, I want them to pay a price. I want them to pay a price. 
but not I'm I'm not looking to you know to yeah, but most to, contractors aren't going to do that if they've got a good reputation I, I, think, I don't I don't I think they a lot know. of these situations are not contractors well then they're that's, trying to do it on their own and the thing is you move into this town you move into Weston you move into Cooper City wherever you're going it is your responsibility to know the rules of the town I, I don't I don't dispute that. You know, well, so so I'm, I bring it up. You know, if if we if we bring a bigger hammer than I'm comfortable with, you know, then um, then maybe we bring a bigger hammer than I'm comfortable with. But um, uh, you know, we'll we'll get we'll get back the recommendation. Uh, Freddie, do you have a comment? Yeah. Go ahead, Freddie. Yeah, what well, I've got a situation. What you're talking about happened right now on my street. A guy went in there, and he put a big platform on a set of wheels. And I don't. He's not claiming that it's a trailer or nothing, but he built a house there. We cited him for building a house without a permit. But Robert, you know where I'm talking about? Did we go any further with that? Did he have to get a septic tank permit also? Are those things, that's what I want to make sure that those things are tied together. So, you know, we got a health problem there. We do. And yeah, so I, I see like this situation we're talking about here fits right in what you're saying. There is what's supposed to be a garage there with no plumbing in it, and yet there is a pipe this big coming out of the uh, concrete from the bottom. Clearly, it's set up for a, uh, a sewer, a septic, a septic tank. And it's, it's not going to go in this weekend. It's not going to go in next weekend, but probably six months from now when everything dies down, ba-boom, it'll go in one weekend, you know? And who knows where it'll be put? Who knows whether it'll be put in right or wrong? Um, you know, who knows if it'll ever be looked at? And so, those are the situations that, you know, yes, <laughs> if if we can get them to to pull that thing back out, and you know what, pull the pipe out of the foundation of that building, I'm all for it, because though that's a situation where somebody is methodically attempting to abuse. Um, the code of our town yeah I, I i fully agree and i think until you make the person whether it's phil whether it's you know converting uh living quarters whatever it is until you make them undo it to move forward uh it's just a cost of doing business you know i, 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 I and i realize i'm probably preaching to the choir yep you know and th i think we're all on the same page we are you know yeah. with that all right. Question so, about how, how all right. So that was that was. I wanted to bring that forth because yeah. um, it uh, it's something that clearly is a, pol a matter of policy. So yeah. it's going to come before the council, and I wanted you all to be aware of it. Let me share with the audience uh, just a little bit of information. This is the only opportunity we have during council member comments to discuss or share anything going on internally within town. Other side, outside of here, we cannot speak any town business together at any time, anywhere. So. This is the only opportunity we have, and we have two meetings a month, so this is the time we can air this stuff out. So other than that, we're not allowed to talk about it or you go to jail. <laughs> so. Or at least pay a big fine. <laughs> hey, you pay a big fine. Um, I, I'd right. just like to share with yeah. residents that haven't been to no. yeah. so, so that's why we do some of our... Um, different, different part of town, different resident. Um, um, I met with uh, Walton Dina Butler, uh, this past week had a good good conversation with them. They are down on uh, 63rd between uh, 188th and 190th and um, they are having um, uh, an incredible amount of nursery traffic coming out of uh, the area next to them. Huge, huge commercial business on many, many acres down there. Um, uh, if, if, I, if I said there were 20 trucks there, I would be way underestimating the number of trucks that come out of there. So believe me when I tell you, I understand the situation. So anyway, um, I uh, spoke with them. Um, you know, they're coming out on a public road. It's, it's, it's a very small road. As you all are aware, you're well aware of that road we've had for other discussions. Um, what we can do there is um, we can put up a stop sign to at least stop them. They're coming out of that road, not even stopping, not even slowing down. I stood there in front of their house. I watched it happen myself. And that was just a random sample over 30 minutes as we were having the conversation. Um, come 
flying out of there with those trucks because it's a relatively, uh, um, I don't want to say, uh, the traffic on the road is not, is not major. So they just, they just come right out, and there's, there's bushes and things there, and it's, it's an accident waiting to happen. But anyhow, so um, we, it, this, we're fortunate that one little corner, a lot of that space is uh, actually on 345, so we have no jurisdiction to put up any traffic control devices in there. But this one corner is in Southwest Ranches, uh, not private, it's public, and so we do have the ability to put a stop sign there, so we're recommending that a stop sign get put on there. What do we have to do to, do, to expedite that? Andy, you got a clue what we need to do to get a stop sign out? We're already in process. Sorry, okay. I just wanted you all to be aware. Yeah. Um, so that's going on. Um, and then the last thing in that same conversation, um, you all probably, uh, probably remember that um, we have had on multiple occasions uh, conversations about a, uh, putting in a uh, access road in that area that is south of 63rd, west of 185th, all the way to Sharon. East of 190th, all the way to Sharon. Exactly. Um, in speaking to some of the neighbors there, even one of the nurseries, you know, I, I gotta, I'm going to stop for a second and just say this, that um, uh, we need to be careful not to put all nursery owners into the same bucket because we have some super nursery owners here that are very conscious of their neighbors, very considerate of their neighbors, and go out of their way to um, fix the problem, to fix the problem, and to do whatever they can to alleviate. And this is one of them. Uh, Tadalia Nurseries um, is one of them. I spoke to Daniel there, um, super guy, and was willing to do whatever we could do to help alleviate this problem. And um, and and I think. Uh, and what I'd like to do is get a, a town hall meeting going. Um, to get all the nursery owners that are in that area and some residential owners, um, I think it's almost all nursery, um, out there and um, have a serious discussion about um, what it would take to get a road, a paved road put in there um, to raise their property values and to, uh, so it should be good for them and so that the traffic, rather than coming up into Southwest Ranches and go exiting um, finally just exit right on Sheridan and we call it a day and get all that traffic off of the, the neighborhood roads. So um, I'm going to be doing, I just once again wanted you all to be aware, um, I'm going to be working with Andy and uh, the administration to try and get that, uh, those notifications sent out and that town hall set up and would love it if you all, I know you all would want to be there. Yeah, of so, course. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that's all I got. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate the heads up. Freddie? I'm good. You're good. Gary, you're up. Yes, thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Hey, thank everybody for coming. Uh, just I'll be brief. A couple things. Um, one is wish everybody a happy Easter and uh, Passover coming up. Uh, we'll be meeting after that. And uh, just a, a fun thing. Uh, this uh, Saturday is the big uh, Rolling Oaks Easter egg hunt. 5,000 eggs, seven foot tall bunny, tip to the ears, to the, to the toenails. Um, <laughs> Uh, it's going to be there, uh, all age groups, uh, from barely walking up to uh, teenagers. Uh, golden eggs are involved in that, and I urge everybody to come and bring their Easter basket, petting zoo. Uh, there's going to be a light brunch served at 11 o'clock. This is on Saturday, uh, the 24th, and it's at the barn uh, at the Rolling Oaks uh, Park. You go right down uh, 178th, make a left midway down, and you, you can't miss it. Uh, it's a lot of fun. It's, our I think, our ninth annual one that we've had uh and I, I urge everybody to go uh to go to this because it's, it's a lot of fun and the kids have a great time um the other thing i want to mention is uh regarding what's going on next door uh the residents that came in tonight thank you um uh you know i don't want to sit here and tell you i feel your pain and you know i'm you want action we're going to do everything we can to make sure people comply with what is going on with without stepping on everybody's toes because they are allowed to operate as a business to what that extent is that's going to be remain uh between andy and uh code enforcement with robert we're all i think we're all in lockstep on that we are and uh we're going to uh be carefully watching that uh and you're right i uh we have that on all our streets i have it on my street 
down the street from me, we have a huge nursery. It's like 40 acres. It's now operating uh, round the clock with uh, trucks, tree trucks, and and hydraulic lifts and all that. So, yeah, I share your pain. I, I you know, we're there, uh, and we are. We've recently passed legislation that has uh, not allowed uh, mulching operations uh, to go on in at nursery levels, and uh, we're going to be reviewing more more stuff as things go on uh, coming through with it. So I just wanted to uh, mention everybody, this is a process. It is not overnight, um, but we, we are working towards it. And we, we, uh, we do listen to the residents very well up here. So I just want everybody to understand that. Okay. And uh, that's about all I got for tonight. Okay. Thank you. Uh, a couple of things. Most of you know I've spoken about with Mario for a day, day and a half or whatever. We went to uh, Central Broward, chatted with Michael Crowley. Um, we met with the administrator here. So we are going to uh, stay on top of this and help police, police it with you. Uh, because that you all do live on that block, we're not going to know. Town Hall obviously is uh, 8.30 to 5. So we're not going to know any after hours activity that kind of stuff so if you all will keep us in the mix related to code enforcement stuff or disturbance or think you know that truck in the middle of the street that I saw today uh, sitting there um, we will address it through code moving forward the other thing I want you to know though is that code uh, enforcement is a tool but it's a little bit slow uh, not because of them but because of what the law allows so if you notify somebody, the time runs, it's 60, 90, or 120 days sometimes till something actually gets fixed related to a problem. So we do have uh, the first Tuesday of every month, there's code hearings in this room right here. So uh, if you all want to know or get a feel of how the code stuff works, you're on the next block, feel free to come by here sometime at 9 o'clock on a Tuesday morning, the first Tuesday of the month. And this is where code is held, uh, the meetings. So uh, it's uh, so we have our own magistrate here, and you know they hear the argument or whatever, and make a ruling on a complaint on items. So, uh, but anyhow, we will uh, police that with you, and uh, try to make uh, the impact as minimal as possible. One of the things I think we might ask is maybe if he could put a hedge up around it. I don't know that he wants to hide his place, but. You know, just, just another thought or idea in a process. Um, the other thing, uh, uh, changing pages here now. The other thing I'd like to uh, let the council know that uh, I was contacted by someone and asked me if the town would be interested in renting out their five acres across from Tom Thumb where the park is to store some dirt. Uh, the site that they're working on, if you're all familiar with Weston Road, uh, where Walgreens is, is behind Walgreens. It's seven or eight acres. They need to, uh, they're building, a, is it an ALF, Andy? Uh, ALF? A yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, so they're building ALF and another facility there. Um, so they've got to um, dig it out. The bad, the muck or the stuff they're not going to reuse are going to haul off and dump somewhere else. But the dirt that they're going to reuse, the backfill, after they dig out, do the footers, foundation all, uh, they'd like to store on our site. Um, I didn't read the letter, but it, Andy just passed out their, uh, what is this, letter of intent? Yes, Mary. We got that late this afternoon. Okay, so we just got this late this afternoon. Obviously, Keith has to... Uh, jump in here and drop a contract and uh, makes uh, tweak this a little bit. But uh, it's basically a, uh, a um, lease for a year, so to speak? Yeah, I would call it a lease. They, a lease they, they, for wanna, they, they need a location to store their fill, most of which will go back to the, to the job site. They're doing a sub-basement, so they need to excavate quite a bit of fill. Uh, the muck they're going to dispose of, it's only clean fill they want to save over there because they will be returning uh, the majority of it to the site. Uh, they also mentioned that if we had a need for any fill to let them know, there wouldn't be any additional charge. But the price they'll pay us is $60,000 for a year, and month to month after that at $5,000 a month. 
So uh, the other thing we asked for was 50% uh, of it up front, and the balance uh, in six months, the other 50%. So we're not waiting for payment. They're going to pay us up front. We don't want to be chasing them month to month. And um, so anyhow, I, I kind of want you guys input, or is it okay? Can we direct Keith mm -hmm. to uh, move forward? or Yeah, I'll let D, D first, and then you, Freddie. Go ahead. Sounds like easy money. <laughs> who, who walks away from sixty thousand dollars? No, no. There, there are other issues that need to be looked at on it on the surface. Um, it's like golf courses. Okay, um, a lot of municipalities own golf courses, but the minute you allow a private individual to pay you money for that golf course, uh, it then becomes taxable. Okay, mm -hmm. it, it, so. You, the municipality is going to have to look at this before making a rash decision to understand the consequences of it because there are tax imp implications directly associated the minute you accept money for allowing fill on the property. Okay, so we charge them tax. No, ad valorem tax. Ad valorem. Your, your property will go on the tax rolls. Town-owned property is going to go in the tax rolls because you're putting dirt on it because, and, and removing it? Because you are renting it out to a private property, a private party. Yes. That's <laughs> the law. And I'm going to, yeah. Well, you'll have to explain that one to me because I don't get that at all. Right, because so you're renting it to I, a I private individual me, for I mean private it. gain. So, so, so at what... At what so uh, what I'm value, not how, saying not to do it. No, no, I understand. I'm saying you just need to understand the. Yep, yeah, I understand it, but, but the cat the catch is, if it were to go in the tax roll, since we've never had anything on the tax roll related to town owned property, how do you come up with a number, or how does the property appraiser come up with a number related to the tax? Roll? It becomes valued as the standard value of uh, vacant five acres in the town. So if it's two hundred thousand acre, two fifty an acre. That's what will go on the tax roll says. Now, again, I'm giving you worst case scenarios because you're bringing it up at a meeting, but I just want you to understand it's not just a free $60,000. There's sales. All right, tax so, so it sounds like a Marty Care question. It's going to be a Martin Sherwood question. <laughs> <laughs> so we have two Martys in questions. <coughs> uh, Councilor Keith is correct. We need time to look into. The tax uh, impact, it could be pro rata, it could be the entire parcel. We're not sure. Uh, as a Town Administrator Burns indicated, it came very late uh, this evening, and we haven't had the opportunity to address it. Uh, uh, we would come back to you uh, quickly uh, with, with our uh, results as soon as we get them. Uh, what's quick to you guys? <laughs> you said quickly. What's quickly? Well, Mayor, Mayor, if I may, you, you have a meeting in two, again in two weeks. <coughs> and, no, I, I get and, that. And so uh, this is something, if, if the council directs us this evening yeah. to, to continue looking at this process, which... Uh, I don't know how we can. Why we wouldn't? I, I, don't, I don't disagree with you. So Marty will start to look at those numbers, get a sense of where those costs fall, uh, and, and we will certainly update you all uh, throughout the process. If the numbers continue to look good favorably to you all independently, because I obviously can't discuss it with you as a group. No, like up here we can as a group, but, but I, nowhere but else. I, but I will, I will keep the council appraised of where we are in this process, and if the consensus appears there, then we'll, we'll draw up an agreement and have that back before you at your next meeting. Okay, Freddie had a question. Well, there's not, I guess. Okay, okay state, what go I, ahead. Yeah, well, what I understand what we're saying is they're going to store fill on that five acres correct well I understand it's gonna be coming down Griffin Road uh, it's gonna it's coming from behind Walgreens on Weston Road so it's not not even a half a mile yeah but how are they gonna get there they're gonna come down Weston Road they're gonna make a right on Griffin and they're gonna make a left right into the property so well, they're they're on they're on there for a hundred yards well that's what I think. we make sure that it's stipulated the only way they can enter that property is from Griffin Road okay because otherwise, you no know problem. what's going to happen. I got it. Yeah, absolutely. Dykes Road is a problem. Yeah. Uh, 
the, the one thing that uh, I wanted to see in this agreement that I don't see, but I have not had, I just got handed yeah, it. All of us so, just got so, it. So, so I haven't. We, haven't we all just got it. Yeah, but I want to make sure that, um, that there <laughs> is uh, an end date to this as well. In other words, I don't know what it is, 12 months, 18 months, mm -hmm. but um, I don't think this is going to be a, an enhancement to the view of our town by having this pile of dirt there, okay? And so I don't want it sitting there forever or for years and years. <coughs> um, I think that after 18 months, there should be an out clause if we choose mm -hmm. to, to continue for another six months. Maybe every six months we have the opportunity to end it. And if, and if we do, um, we can dispose of or keep the, 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 okay. um, What's there? the fill, whatever's yeah. there. Um, because I, I, I just don't want this to go on no, and no, on no, and I get on. It. I get so, it. so that's the one thing I don't see in there that I'd like to see in this. Okay. Go ahead, Gary. Yeah, if I could chime in. It, and I, ha I have not read this yet. I haven't either. Okay, so I, I we, we, it, we all just got it. No, no, it I, I, know, I know, but the couple things I, I want to point out. One is the entranceway that we're talking about off of Griffin Road that was built. <clears throat> I, it drops off. Gonna and you're talking that. about say, putting thousands and tons of truck trucks over it. There's got to be an obvious access road built there before we even contemplate that. That should be in the agreement, uh, you know, to to improve that area. Mm -hmm. Maybe something permanent. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would put severe restrictions on 163rd and on Dykes Road that they not have any. There's no way they can go in that area, you know. B before I would even, you know, consider this, I would want to have a you know some sort of reassurance that the residents are not looking at dump trucks all day long, you know, or something like something to that effect. And then, uh, uh, it's cross street from the nursery. Huh? The five acres on 163rd yeah. is yeah. across the street from the oh, nursery. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, then you've got the, uh, park right next to it. Mm -hmm. Um, do we have fill that spills onto the park? No. What are the ramifications behind that? If it does, yeah. you know, or something to that. No, I gave them my, uh, what was it, that document that I gave them related to the uh, site and boring samples and whatnot. Yeah, it was just the, the geo geological study. So I gave them a geological copy of the geological study we had done that shows boring samples and whatnot and showed where the site was and the boundaries and all that stuff. So right. they have that. Why, um, how, how quickly does this have to be executed or not executed? Sooner the better. Is this something that can wait a month while we research it? Um, Two I, weeks. I, I would hope the ne by next meeting. Okay. I mean, we can re we have it research by next meeting, and then yeah, I would I hope come to. come to some kind of a decision because I think there's going to be a greater impact than we think on the neighborhood. Andy, and I'm kind of I'm kind of fearful of what what the residents are going to go through, uh, depending mm -hmm. on the number of truckloads. I think we need to. Well, I, I only see us getting a bunch of phone calls like, "What are we doing there?" Oh, I see that right off the bat. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. I think that's a newsletter article if I've ever seen one. Like, <laughs> you know, don't flip out. <laughs> right, a temporary right. Temporary, absolutely situation. So, but I mean, so, so I see that as far as the phone calls, uh, and us just saying, well, we're storing dirt for a little while, but we're pay being paid uh, a lot of money to do it. But, yeah, Mayor, if I if I can jump in for a Go moment, I, I I recognize this all hit you really now just during the meeting. It got it got to my email late today recognize this is not an agreement this is a letter of interest from somebody who wants to move forward with it the concerns that you've expressed tonight I've, I've certainly heard and if the numbers are justified as we go forward the agreement that Keith will draw up will include those concerns that that, that certainly council has okay good so uh, we can direct uh, Keith or Andy and then to move forward to continue to uh Research this? No pun intended. <laughs> okay. All right. Marty, you got that? Okay. All right. Um, other than that, uh, the Easter egg hunt uh, the, the, out Saturday at the uh, Rolling Oaks Barn. Uh, it's a great event. It's a lot of fun. If you all have got kids, uh, trust me, they'll have a blast. Uh, if you all haven't been, you should go just to see how, uh, what an event it is. It's really cool. Um, other than that, I uh, wish everybody a uh, great happy Easter and uh, all the other stuff going on. So, uh, Keith, you're up to bat, buddy. Sure. Uh, by the way, on this lease, just uh, to let you know the one that uh, we just got, it's a, uh, a one-year lease with one-year extension that they can terminate monthly. 
Uh, obviously, um, my response to that would be a one-year lease and 30-day extensions uh, that can be terminated by either party. Um, good so, you know, the way that they wrote it's not correct. Uh, just so that I know, the issues that we're looking at in is uh, Marty's going to look at the taxation issues. Um, the other issues that I heard to discuss are a uh, number of loads of fill delivered per day, per week, et cetera. No, I, uh, I don't know his number of loads per day per week. I think they want to more keep it on Griffin Road and no, no local roads, okay. 163rd. Um, I mean, when you leave their site, they're going to take – they're going to come out onto Griffin Road, excuse me, Weston Road. They're going to make a right turn. They're going to go to the light at Griffin. They're going to make a right turn, and they're going to make the very first left, which is a left-hand turn lane, into our site. There's a cutout in the curb there. All right, so then it, you'll draw a map showing the, 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 the how to travel. The path yeah, I think you have to make they, a U-turn, actually. Yeah. That they will be required to go to get there. Um, we'd have to specify the hours of fill delivery. Uh, the location that has to be uh, on the property, uh, how they come in and out, which is what you just said, mm -hmm. uh, paved access road, environmental issues, um, and um, and those are the primary uh, it issues that I see just sitting here getting this in, in, in two minutes. Um, I'm sorry? Oh, yeah, and, and yeah. restoration of the property uh, thereafter. Um, also, you know, based on the number of loads, I don't know these streets uh, where exactly we're talking about, but someone should do an analysis because these uh, rock trucks may rip up those roads. So uh, the question is, is also to look at insurance, you know, fixing our roads, et cetera, when they're complete with whatever they're doing over there. Listen, you're, you're drawing up the contract. Yeah. So, so, okay, I got, <laughs> I got that one done. Um, you all brought up the, the building uh, code um, issue on people failure to get permits. I have an initial suggestion that doesn't require anything. Um, it's just basically a direction from the council. And that is, I think that a lot of, uh, well, probably guess 50 percent, maybe more, of the issues can be resolved by a simple direction to uh, building uh, department and to code department by saying, if in the event a contractor builds without a, a permit, uh, not only are they going to be charged the double fee, which is currently on our books, but you are to report them to the state. And I guarantee you that it will quickly be known that if you build without a permit in the town and you're a contractor, you're going to be reported. And that, I believe, personally, will slow down a lot of the issues that you have. Because I do not believe we're reporting them today, which is a, a big part of the problem. So something you may want to consider as an initial fix is just simple direction to uh, the town on how to handle it. So I just want to mention that for, for your consideration either this week or next. Um, I think we should be doing that anyway. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I think that's a good, I think it's a good recommendation. My, my uh, I mean, I, I think that's good. Um, I think there's a lot of I think there's a lot of that going on that's not being done by contractors. That's so. Well, Private. right, but that's the secondary level. So yeah. that's why I said maybe 50 percent, maybe yeah. less. But so. about 50 percent is, is. But but if that's the direction of the council, then you know Robert Robert's here and uh, he can speak with uh, Cap tomorrow about it. Is that Absolutely. correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, All right. Would, the, uh, that's, the so that's I thought building. We were doing that already. Right. <laughs> so did I. No. <laughs> Okay, um, the, the next issue uh, that I need to discuss is um, nurseries, because you all brought it up, so now I'm going to bring it up. For years, going back to 1968, um, many of the zoning categories in the town, rural estates, um, probably rural ranches, rural estates, rural ranches, um, allowed nurseries. If you remember when the town was formed, um, there were some other zoning categories that the town essentially got rid of to make everything really RERR. You remember there was much more ag when we first formed, et cetera. But there may be a, a situation now where because we were so desirous of be, being <coughs> rural and allowing agricultural uses that we are now one of the Attractive. lone places in Broward County that allows it as of right which is why you're experiencing much more problems 17 years later than you were originally as it relates to these uses. 
So uh, without the uh, killing the messenger, just throwing it out there after hearing what you're, you're saying, the council may wish to consider a code amendment uh, and say that any nursery, new nursery, this wouldn't affect existing nurseries, which would be vested, but any new nurseries uh, would have to get a special exception of the council to approve it on a particular piece of property yes. and come up with certain criteria that you will consider to allow a new nursery, including the size of the parcel, you know, location of the access roads, uh, whether or not it's surrounded by residential homes, et cetera. So, um, you know, I know it sort of goes against the grain, even my grain fundamentally on uh, rural lifestyle, but I, I constantly am now hearing more and more issues yep. uh, with outside nurseries who are not longtime rancher nurseries coming into the ranches, opening up shop, and now having conflicts with the neighbors that we've never seen before. So it may be behoove you all to think about that, and if it's something you may want to consider, send it to the Comp Plan Advisory Board and uh, give them direction to come up with uh, some uh, protocol on how to deal with this in the future. Uh, I have a quick question. What is, what is the difference, Keith, between a nursery and Home Depot? Well, in the ranch, is not much. Well, that's what I'm saying. You know, if it's not grown on your property, how do you consider yourself a nursery? You know, Home Depot has everything you could possibly want, you know? And that's where Home Depot should stay, over there. So with what was done to the property, he ain't growing anything. He's bringing it all in. Who changed the code? I don't know that it was. I, the, the code has not changed. The code, the code hasn't been changed. We're, we're in a mode that, uh, as, as Keith just mentioned, that it's been 17 going on 18 years. And, you know, this is part of growing pains and having this problem. And in the last couple of years, we've been getting more and more complaints of residents related to nurseries, nursery business, all that kind of stuff. Uh, a lot of the nurseries, what they do is they expand and get into, uh, you know, maintenance of property. And then they have trailers and mowers and equipment and all the other stuff, which is not part of a nursery business. The, the only code change we did was to make it more restrictive and on to August, limit the mulching. In August of 2017, that's what I heard. What was that? Was that the mulching? Was that the mulching? The, the town passed a law to prohibit nurseries from mulching. Uh, they were they, they made it more restrictive, not less. Yeah, made it. We made it tougher, not not. We we have not made it any easier. What is it with the rule? Could you Doug, come, Doug, Could you come up to the mic? Doug, we're not supposed to be going back and forth on this. No, well, I know, well, but we, we do can if we want. Right. No. So so uh, the only purpose for my suggestion is is to throw it out there if the council is interested in seeing you know maybe it's time to if you think there may be time to put some additional limitations in i'm asking if that's the case for you to give direction to your comp plan board to work on this to bring back something for your consideration formally if you think it's time to do that i think it's time to do that i think it doesn't hurt for the comp plan board to take a look at it and come back with a recommendation Retroactive, so I don't no. No. Yeah, I get no way to do that, unfortunately. No, I think we should put it put it as a directive to yeah. the comp plan board see and see back. what they come back with us. Yeah. Uh, come back with you know to us on that going through Jeff Kadam's office and 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 the whatnot, right. and then we can kick it around till we're blue in the face. All right, and I agree to come up with something. Okay. Yeah, we're we're on board. All right, uh, thank Freddy, you. you. Sorry, I didn't bring that up. Now, yeah, Freddie's on board too. We're all good. All right, uh, final uh, legal note. Uh, final? You got a bunch of legal stuff. I'm uh, <laughs> uh, uh, made a couple. First off, um, uh, for those of you who, who don't follow, uh, Pembroke Pines um, swore in two, new, two commissioners yesterday. Uh, congratulations to both of them. Uh, uh, personally, exceptionally pleased that uh, Tom Good got elected. Uh, Tom was a wonderful uh, South Broward uh, drainage district uh commissioner who was always a voice of reason and dealt with the ranches with dignity and respect and i can only hope that he will continue to excel in that role now being a commissioner of pembroke pines um so I, i'd like to formally congratulate him as it relates to uh pembroke pines yesterday uh, we had the privilege 
of going to a uh, motion um, in court in which uh, the town of Southwest Ranches sought to uh, consolidate our case with Correction Corporation of America uh, Core Civic Group uh, is their new name. So uh, essentially what the goal was is now that Core Civic Group won at the Supreme Court level and now just basically needs to prove damages. They're at the same stage that we are in the case, meaning that you know, we know they breached our contract, so now we need to prove damages. And as such, our, our claims are, are now identical, okay? Uh, also, from a, a, a real perspective of the town, having a billion-dollar company sitting next to you at trial is not a bad thing, you know, especially when they're paying for uh, to be next to you at trial. So uh, there were tremendous advantages in teaming up together with them. Uh, yesterday was the hearing. Uh, it was supposed to be 15 minutes. I think it went well over an hour or about an hour. Mm -hmm. um, I can tell you that Pines, uh, with their three attorneys, opposed this motion with some of the more vigorous, uh, vehement language that I have uh, been accustomed to in court, so much so that an intern was there and the intern was instructed that that's not really how you behave in court, so don't uh, watch what transpired. Uh, we all left uh, without any indication really which way it was going, uh, but understanding that our case, uh, it was supposed to go to uh, the, the trial. Uh, essentially, jury selection started next week, and then April it went March. to trial in April for a two-week trial. Um, this morning, um, before noon, uh, the judge uh, hand wrote a motion that said, uh, granted, uh, the cases shall be consolidated for trial and our cases removed for the April docket. This to me is excellent news for the town uh, because it puts a, a tremendous um, advantage to us by having a partner like Core Civic to be able to help uh, direct this litigation and fund this litigation. Um, what this means in time frame is that the trial now will probably move to November, December, maybe the first month of the year, because Core Civic just needs to play catch up now. They need to read all of our depositions, all of the motions, and they need to get ready for the case. So um, to me, this was a, a very important next step it's one that uh, I don't even know how Pines is going to tell their commissioners what transpired, but it was a huge um, uh, step moving forward for the town and to me one that uh, met all requirements of law and was the proper way to proceed uh, in this case. So we were very happy about that. Um, and other than that, that's it, Mayor. Awesome. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> there is one more thing. Yes. I thought there was. Uh, council, I don't know what you're talking about, yeah, okay. so you'll remind me in a second. Council Member Schroeder made a motion uh, to appoint this individual to a board right. and never had a second. So if we could just do a second, second. and a quick, okay, uh, <laughs> roll call then. Second and a roll call. Council Here. Member Schroeder? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Brightcruz? Yes. Vice Mayor Kelly. Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Okay, now as it relates to that, just for, for clarification, that board is constituted with seven members. Now you have six on it. Mm -hmm. nope. so, so you may wish to add one more. Add one more. Okay. Exactly. So that's the answer there. What was the other issue that I forgot? I'm not sure. Okay. There was another one. But I'm good for now. Okay. Andy. Yeah, thank you, Mayor. Just a couple of things. Uh, there's obviously been a lot of discussion on the nursery next door. I have met with the mayor and, and with, with Mario. Just want to assure you all that we'll continue to work with the neighbors and with code to certainly enforce the rules that we have to make sure that they play by those rules and uh, we'll do everything we can to make sure they're as good a neighbor as we can make them be. Uh, we'll remain accessible to you and, and we'll work to communicate and do, certainly do the best we can. We have to operate within our code. We will enforce that code to the best of our ability. Uh, a couple other things. I just wanted to let you know that the governor did sign the budget. And a special thanks to the mayor and council member Schroeder who went up to Tallahassee during Broward days. Uh, the town was able to secure $500,000 for various drainage projects around town. Yeah. 
Uh, the fire station update that continues. Uh, I've got some specifics on that that I can share with you. If you bear with me, I just have to double check the notes on that. But I would just want to give you all an update on that. And uh, let's see. Site plan has been finalized and approved. The modular company has initiated the permitting process. Broward County Health Department has issued their preliminary comments. The design team is finalizing their responses and will resubmit in the next couple of days back to them. Uh, the building department won't sign off on the drawings until we get the Broward County stamp. So we're, we're working on that, making that a very high priority. Uh, we're going to submit anyway to the building department, so try to run those processes concurrently. We've received correspondence from FPNL yesterday. Uh, they're asking for some additional information, which we're in the process of supplying to them. And uh, we are continuing to move this project as, as quickly as we can. Uh, staff is meeting on this, on, on, uh, certainly on a weekly basis, to update all concerned. But obviously, as, as things happen on a day-to-day -day basis, we're, we're jumping on it as, as those things arise. So I just want to make you aware of that we're continuing to work on that. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to... Sorry, Mayor? I'm, gonna say, I'm saying, Keith, I'm going to come back to you in a minute. Okay. The only other thing I wanted to touch on is there was some discussion before on that Pines project that was on the agenda. I've discussed it with some of you individually. I did ask Rod and Russell to do some research on that today, and Russell has some additional information that he can share with you at, at, if you'll indulge me on uh, the administrative report. Sure, go ahead. And that, that's all I have once Russell's done, Mayor. Plus. Good evening, Mayor and Council members. Uh, Basically, I'm passing down some documentation that we were able to glean from Pembroke Pines website related to the um, RFP that they put out there for this water loop, looping system, this water looping project. Um, the, the RFP is over 200 pages long. I didn't want to necessarily print out all the pages, but uh, it kind of gave you some of the highlights. Um, but if you look at the last page, there's a ledger size document that kind of shows the service area that they're proposing to, um, to, to put these lines into. And if you look, it basically is um, US 27 from Sheridan all the way up to Griffin Road and looping the properties that are adjacent to US 27. All of these properties that would be in there are, are Town of Southwest Ranch's properties. Um, I'm not going to speculate as to uh, exactly what they're up to, but I think you can draw your own conclusions. Um, they were very, uh, I would say, cryptic in some of the language that they were using in the RFP. Um, again, I'll let you draw your own conclusions as to why that is. Um, but some of the concerns that were brought up when Rod and I discussed this were um, they're basically laying pipe down in properties adjacent to the town that clearly would be our service area, per se. And so um, we don't know if they're trying to block any future uh, lines from being put in. We're not quite sure what the purpose of the project is. Um, they contend that it's to enhance the service area for their own utility. There's no way for us to really know if that's really the case or not, but we just wanted to provide this information that we found for you tonight. Okay. Anybody have any questions? I have a million questions, but <laughs> not ones that no one can answer. No, no one can answer. Yeah, I get that. Find out more info. <clears throat> but, but, but I will tell you. How can you, we police that? You, you know, um, I urge all of you to reach out to Tom Good on any question that you may have. Uh, directly commissioner to commissioner and I think you'll find a very open dialogue absolutely well I, I wanted to thank D and uh, Steve for coming last night to that swearing-in appreciate it um, Keith um, two things back to you any word on the fire truck issue and any word on our proper stolen real estate that we, maybe we can just get the uh, the lien amount back at least <laughs> okay, um, as a, uh, the real estate's a much bigger headache, so I'm not going to bore everyone with a full legal um, d dissertation on uh, priority of title and everything else because it, it gets very complex. As it relates to the fire truck, um, we drafted a letter, then the issue got worse. We drafted another letter, then the issue got worse. And so we drafted a, yet another letter, and this one I actually had sent to Andy uh, today. Uh, for review, um, and so we're hopeful we're going to get out another letter on uh, Monday um, because what's happening is that the local individuals here have no idea what their legal counsel is telling us, so they're not on the same page at all. 
and, and it's causing a lot of issues because when the chiefs bring it in to be repaired, saying that, you know, there, there's an issue, there's an issue, they're saying, what issue? We don't know what you're talking about. Yet we have a letter from their legal counsel saying, yeah, this, there was a recall on this item and get it fixed. So, um, you know, I'm glad we waited a little bit on a responsive letter because things changed three times since uh, we were going to get the initial, the second letter out. So hopefully by Monday we'll have it. If you want a copy, I'll be happy to send it to you tomorrow. Okay. So uh, how long we wait until they don't take an action? We have to sue. Um, I, this is supposed to be done in January. Right. I mean, my, <laughs> my, my hope is that uh, we make it clear in this letter that if this is not resolved immediately, we're, we're going to court. Okay. Uh, one good news uh, about this is... They have a contract that they gave us um, that had choice of law and forum in uh, Delaware or wherever their base, North Dakota, somewhere uh, crazy. Um, but we never signed it, and they never signed it. So I'm going to argue here. Okay. All right. Good. Go what ahead. is what is this? I don't need the whole whole conversation. But what piece of land are you talking about? in The other issue. I don't even. Know, I don't even know uh, what it you're was talking a code. About. It was a to make a long story short. There was a code enforcement action in which we foreclosed on a barn. Okay. Uh, the person buried a That's horse crazy. in their backyard. And in long story short, it went to the. We owned it. It went to the courthouse steps, and the court assigned it to another person who then sold it to another person who sold it to yet another person. So right. it is a hodgepodge of issues for a property that can never be developed because it's so small anyway. So uh, it's now with its rightful landowner because it's coupled with the property that it's attached to. So now it makes a proper sized property. Right. So from a municipal standpoint, it's not bad what transpired. But it was wrong of the court to have sold a property that the town foreclosed on. We had a, we had a, what a forty something thousand dollar late judgment on it. Hmm. This is the one in Sunshine Ranch. Yeah. It is in Sunshine Ranches, oh. next to Mark Stevens' house. It's in the back. Yeah. On, on Hancock. No, off of uh, Holiday. Holiday, the back. Oh, off of Holiday. Great, thanks. Okay. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. I think, uh, yep. Number eight. A resolution of the town council of the town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving the use of funds from a new emergency line of credit to be used to reimburse the town for costs incurred in connection with Hurricane Irma for debris removal and related expenses of the project, declaring its official intention to finance the cost of the project through issuance of a note for a new emergency line of credit and providing for an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Any public comment on this matter? Mm. Seeing no public comment, public comment is closed. Back to us. Any questions here? Uh, Marty, do you have any comments on it? He <laughs> <laughs> said no. <laughs> no. Sorry. Marty, All right. Marty, You're Marty, famous, Marty. Marty. He doesn't need to. Yeah. Well, no, for any residents that are watching or whatever, I think it would be good okay. to get a little explanation. All right. Marty. Oh, yes. Okay. No. Wake up. Thank you, uh, Mayor, Council Members. For the record, my name is Martin Sherwood, Town Financial Administrator. Uh, what we are do doing tonight is protecting the town with the future line of credit that will be coming back to you. Uh, n next month, we expect in April uh, a more favorable line of credit, uh, hopefully uh, with lower interest rates, but we all know interest rates uh, are, are on the upside and moving uh, at least two more times by the end of the year. However, uh, we expect that to be a significant saving. So what this resolution uh, allows us is to extend backward 60 days back to January 21st for the expenditures that we have spent uh, on a cash disbursement basis, which represents about 1.2 million, and will allow us to draw from our forthcoming new line of credit, uh, which we expect to be at a lower interest rate. Uh, presently, we only have one point. Six million outstanding with Centennial Bank of our 4.5 million uh, line of credit, uh, which was at 4.25% uh, with the 
a recent change in the prime rate will be four and a half percent. The new forthcoming rent rate will be at least a hundred basis points lower, um, and uh, will enable us to draw at closing, going back to January 21st at the new lower rate and. Uh, that's what this rezo does. It doesn't tell uh, uh, or, or, or uh, determine the line of credit we're going to have. It just keeps our options open to borrow money at a lower rate uh, pending the outcome of the new line of credit. Thank you, Marty. Um, just, I just want to just thank you for, I know you've had put in an incredible amount of time and negotiations on this whole uh, renegotiation of the line of credit. It's going to benefit the town uh, uh, greatly. So thank you for all that, all that work and effort. Thank you. And all that work will be coming forthcoming uh, and transparent with the April agenda. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Call the question, Russell, if you would. Can we do public comment? I did public comment. All right. I'll open it back up. Public comment. Go ahead. Get to the mic. You got to stand up here. You got to come to the mic, please. Got to give your name and address. We don't know who you are. Mike Hanley, 50th place. Uh, I want to know in this resolution it says the town for, will be reimbursed for the emergency line of credit for used for cost incorrected. What's incorrected? <laughs> Hello? In it's a typo. I don't understand that word. Typo. It's a typo. I wanted Marty to explain. I thought maybe it was some kind of uh, technical. Right. It's the Scribner's error. error. That'll be that corrected for the record. Well, I don't want anybody to be reimbursed for being incorrected. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Ready? Call the question, please. Councilmember Schroeder. Yes. Councilmember Jablonski. Yes. Councilmember Breikers? Yes. Vice Mayor Fiscelli? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. Number nine. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving an interlocal agreement with Broward County, Florida for the use of temporary debris management sites following a natural or man made disaster, authorizing the Mayor, Town Administrator, and Town Attorney to execute any and all documents necessary to properly effectuate the intent of this resolution and providing an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Any public comment on this matter? Seeing no public comment, public comment is closed. Back to us. Anyone have any additional comments? Seeing none, call the question. Council Member Schroeder? Yes. Council Member Jablonski? Yes. Council Member Breakers? Yes. Vice Mayor Fiskelly? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Number 10. A resolution of the Town Council of the Town of Southwest Ranches, Florida, approving an amendment to the interlocal agreement with Broward County providing for the division and distribution of the proceeds of the original gas tax, authorizing the mayor, town administrator, and town attorney to execute said agreement and providing an effective date. Motion to approve. Second. Okay, any public comment on this matter? Seeing no public comment, public comment is closed. Back to us. Anyone have any questions? Well, I do. Do we have any idea how much money this is going to be, Marty? Yes, Mr. As indicated, uh, our population increased, but our population increased smaller than the overall Broward County population. So due to that, it impacts our gas uh, taxes uh, a slot, very, very little, $397. It'll be lower than the previous year. Yes, the uh, budgeted, the adopted and budget, it was $79,359, so it'll uh, reduce it to approximately $79,000. Very small, that's what occurs when our population goes up, but a smaller amount in relationship to the total population in Broward County. Okay, thank you. Call the question, please, Russell. Councilmember Schroeder? Yes. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Councilmember Breikus? Yes. Vice Mayor Fiskelli? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. All right. Approval of minutes, number 11. <coughs> Motion to approve. Second. Any public comments? We've been corrected before. 
Seeing no public comment, public comment is closed. Back to us. Any additional corrections or anything from up here? We're good. Call the question. Councilmember Schroeder? Yes. Councilmember Jablonski? Yes. Councilmember Brightcruz? Yes. Vice Mayor Fitzkelly? Yes. Mayor McKay? Yes. Motion passes. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. All right. Adjourn. All right. Good luck with